All right, so there's a new study, all right? Uh, it was focused on women, women who suffer from depression. Ultra-processed foods, what does that mean? We'll explain. But, you know, think cakes, cookies, sodas, fast food, have been found to have not just a direct link on your gut, but on your brain. Best-selling author, leading medical expert on the connection between food and our bodies, Dr. Mark Hyman. Doc, thank you for doing this on short notice. Um, you know, reading through the reviews on the studies, I, I feel like uh, I don't know how this isn't going to uh, appeal to m men as well. Uh, Dusty was saying, yeah, the hormones are different, but that's not what the study was centered on. So what do you make of this and what does it mean? Well, look, Chris, the question is, does being depressed make you eat junk food or is eating junk food make you depressed? And the answer mm. is yes, <laughs> probably both. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a very important study because it looked at over 30,000 women between ages of 42 and 62 over a long period of time and found that testing them before they were depressed and watch what they ate. And those who actually ate more junk food got more depression. So if you had nine servings a week of junk food, your risk of being depressed increased by 50%. Now, here's the deal, Chris. In 1990, there was 11% obesity rates. Now there's 42%. Depression also has skyrocketed 50% in the same time period. Why? Because of our diet. We eat an inflammatory diet, and we know from the science that inflammation in the brain is part of what's causing depression, and this is a very inflammatory diet. And we're still figuring out the mechanisms. Is it because of our uh, gut flora that changes and that drives inflammation? Is it because of the inflammatory foods that we're eating from the sugar that causes increased belly fat, which makes us more inflamed? But the data is really clear, not just from this one study, but from a large body of evidence that what we eat plays a huge role in our mood. And this is not my opinion. There's now a Department of Nutritional Psychiatry at Harvard, one of metabolic psychiatry at Stanford. Scientists now are really understanding the role between food and mood. And, and what's really frightening Chris, is that we are seeing an increasing epidemic, not only of obesity, but of depression in this country. One in 10 Americans are depressed. You know, one in four su suffer severe depression in their lifetime. And this is a treatable problem. So we, we can fix this, but we have to understand that we cannot eat these foods anymore. <laughs> these are things that are not causing just depression, but 14% increase in mortality with every 10% of your diet that's ultra processed food. And Chris, 60% of our diet is ultra processed food. 67% of kids' diets. That's why we're seeing kids with taking Prozac and why we're seeing suicide rates skyrocketing in children. It's because of our food system and the food we're eating. So wh where are the main places to take it out where you can make easy change? Well, you know, <laughs> Michael Pollan said it great. If it was grown in a plant, eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't eat it. And that's a little bit tongue in cheek. But the idea is if you can't recognize what's on the label, don't eat it. If it's deconstructed ingredients from industrial produced foods, from corn, soy and wheat, then we should not be putting those in our body because when we separate out those ingredients, we turn them into a science project and our bodies and our brains don't know what to do with them. For example, uh, uh, Kevin Hall at the NIH looked at people who just were given as much as they want to eat of regular whole foods or ultra processed food. And those who were given ultra processed food ate 500 calories more a day because it was dysregulating their bodies. So basically, mm. it's the things that come in packages, boxes, cans, it's processed. You know, basic minimal processing is fine. You know, a can of tomatoes is fine. Tomatoes, water, and salt. You make tomato sauce, right? But if it's got 45 ingredients and you can't pronounce them, or they're in Latin, or you don't know what they are, it's probably not good for you. And what was interesting about gotcha. this study, Chris, is that the biggest correlation was artificial sweeteners. Now, there's a lot of controversy mm. about this, and there was an article in the Washington Post recently that showed that, that the food industry was paying nutritionists to show that these artificial sweeteners were fine and we should be eating them, and they're not a problem. And they were being paid to say this on, on, on their social media influencer channels. But the truth is that we know that artificial sweeteners are, are new to nature and that our bodies don't know how to regulate these, these compounds when we eat them, and it increases mm -hmm. our appetite. It might destroy our microbiome. We're still figuring it out, but they're not good for us. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.